Jim's question is how do we fit the die? With the MFI we drop it from the top, and with this machine we drop it up from the bottom. We have this holder, it's called the die retaining nut, and this screws into the base. There's a seal on here as well, and that one is also critical. If you can see metal at the top there, you need to replace it because sometimes when there's metal to metal, this gets too hot, it will expand and jam. Replace the whole plug or? No, just the seal. It's easy to replace, you just pull it out, push a new one in. The die goes in the holder with the seal towards the top. And we use this tool. We don't need to do this really tight, it just needs to be finger tight. Right, should be Okay, we're there now. We've now, we've now got the option on here of, of gas off, purge full. Purge is something that we use and that just allows a very small amount of gas to flow. We'll use purge later. I want to put the full gas on. You can hear it clearing its throat. Turn that off, yeah, that's the way that So that sounds quite clear now. I'm just going to turn the gas down because one of the things we have to do is during the test we have to achieve a certain flow rate <coughs> and that depends on the viscosity of the material. So the very first test you do with a new material you need to work out what flow rate to use. Once you've, once you've found out the flow rate then the next time you just set it to the correct pressure. But I'm going to set it to zero and show you how we adjust the pressure. So we've cleaned the die. Toby, are you going to run one yet? Because we'll use the software also, is that, or you want to just show these guys the software? No, I'm going to show the software. I've just got the machine ready, so it's okay. ready now. And what we'll do with the software is... Uh, get your cert for the die. It's over there. Put a question in there too, one question, because we're going to run one that's not dried, so we'll have a... Later, yeah. Okay. Um, this is an Exigen Plus, same software. If we hit edit, this is the IV test setup. So we can choose the temperature, we need 295 for this material. The internal diameter of the die, this is 20 thou. This is the length of the die, so that's all correct. This is the default setting, it's 20 thou die. Okay, and you'll have a cert that comes with the die and the length, what uh, may be slightly different, so yeah. it's close. They're, they're it's so close. close that it makes no difference. Do we make the dies internally? Or? No, no you put it inside. Yeah. And that's all there is in the test setup. It's really simple. In the results, we've got PT results. IV results. IV at zero is the end result. We saw earlier in the presentation we extrapolate back to zero time. That's the melt viscosity which some people are interested in and that's the degradation which again some people are interested in. And that's all we need to do. It's really easy. And the next step is to get started. The key with this machine is to be organised and have everything ready because we need to transfer this into here with a minimal interruption possible. So, what I'm going to do next is I, I'm going to. Um, I might just put it down here. You like it down there? Um, we're going to put the material in, then the follower, then we're going to take this and just hold it for a minute just while it compacts, then we're going to fit the probe, and then we're going to switch the gas on. While we compact it, we're going to have purge switched on, which just allows a small flow of gas so that we don't get any air contamination. 
The good thing is, the machine will tell us what to do. <clears throat> so if I push start, that's all I need to do with the PC. I can walk away from the PC and I can do everything on here. It says insert the sample and the follower and press go. Now would you want to purge for a minute before you put the sample in? Not really. Okay. What we can do here is we're going to take one sample. This is under vacuum, so I'm going to close the tap. Release it from here. So we've now got a vacuum in here. Well, excuse me, didn't running purge put nitrogen up out of there, and when you open this valve, the vacuum sucked the nitrogen back into the... That's what we're going to do. Oh, okay. Yep. What I'm going to do is just switch on purge. It's a little tiny bit of gas. I'm going to put this in here and open the valve so when it sucks, it sucks nitrogen. Switch the gas off, and then I'm going to put the material in. It's quite difficult, the machine is very high. I'm going to put the follower in, put the rod on, and I'll push it. And it tells you. And it's just a one minute countdown. You don't need to push really hard on here, just make sure it's at the bottom and just, just rest your hand on there just to let it melt together. So you want a, you want a dry environment in the lab anyway, obviously if you're exposing it even for a couple seconds to, to the air, right? the, the machine's automatically switched on the purge when I push go. The faster you can get it in there, the better. At this stage, I can usually tell what the IV is by how hard it is. Now he's told me that this was 0.8, but I haven't ran any of this. Uh, I use the high stuff, so. Yeah. I'm going to get to the end of the minute. I'm going to fit the probe. It's telling us to fit the probe. Screw that on. Push go. When I push go, it switches on the gas pressure. At the moment, there's almost no pressure because, as I mentioned, I want to start. If I just go around here, yep, see. let me get out there. I want to start from the beginning, so I'm going to turn it up. Twenty thousand diameter. Okay. What we're looking for is a flow rate of between 0 0.5 and one millimeter a minute. The ideal is to be very close to 0.5 millimeters a minute at the beginning of the test because we mentioned it thermally degrades so it becomes less viscous so it will get faster during the test. So if we can start somewhere around 0 0.5, 0 0.6 that would be ideal. And that's probe speed. Probe speed. At the moment it's not measuring because it needs a couple of minutes to stabilize and then it will start measuring and if we're too low it will give us an error message. You can get an idea right here. You see the probe distance reading. After you use this a couple of times, yeah. you can see that it's too it's slow. It's too slow or too fast, and uh, you can get an idea. But it looks a little slow, doesn't it? Right yeah, now, totally. no, it's definitely slow. So if you got an air condition, what do you do? Turn up the gas. But you need to do it carefully because you get a real spike in it. But once you get to know this instrument, you'll know that if the IV is 0.8, you probably need 15 bar. Depending on the die, if it was a if it was a thirty thousand die, we'd probably need four or five bar. Is that how you adjust the probe speed with the pressure? Yeah. So in a minute, it will start measuring and it will beep at us that it's too slow. In fact, it's not really moving. Now at this point, so Toby, knowing that it's yeah, slow, it's not moving. would you go ahead and raise it right I now? I would do it now, yeah, just yeah, because right. it's a bit too slow. Right. It's yeah, it's come up because it's too slow. When you adjust it, try and be careful because what will happen is the, the speed will rock it up <laughs> and then it will come right back down and stabilize. So wait for it to do that before you make any further adjustment. So we've got this probe speed here. You can see it's changing quite dramatically. Yeah, and we only got about a minute left to get this right from this yeah. point. I suspect we'll have to turn it up a bit more. How do you see, know it's how dropping, see it's dropping right down again. Yeah. Right, yeah. 
have I'm going to turn it way up because I know okay, that so it you needs... have five minutes. You have five minutes before your test starts. I know that it needs quite a, a lot more pressure. And you have to do that for each test. You have to adjust the nitrogen. Only if it's a new material, because the next time we do it, we know which pressure to use. So it's already preset. Then it's not preset. Is that you know we we might finish at 15 or 20 bar, in which case we'll do just set it this, just leave the thing that where it is for the next test. Now at this point it could be just a hair fat uh, it's dropping again, see it? Yeah, it, 15 should be too low. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to rack it right up to 20 more. I would expect with 0.8 to, to need a good 20 bar. If I don't, then I know that it's low IV or it's not dry. So is there on the first sample for any material like this is there a little playing around with it and then yeah. you kind of tweak it for the falling samples after that and what's yeah. the ideal probe speed again 0.5 but the beginning is between 0.5 and 1 but 0.5 to 0.6 at the start and once you get to know as i said at, at, twen at 0.8 i know that you should need see this is this is actually probably more than 0.8 it's needing quite a lot of pressure We're nearly there now. Well, what happens at that at five minutes, Scott, if we don't reach that pressure? Model, it it will continue the test. Okay. It does compensate to some extent to you adjusting the pressure, but I wouldn't rely on this as a final result. Okay. So it's got a countdown timer on how much you need? And how much the rest of the test, yeah. At five minutes, that's when it starts measuring. So the, speed, the speed is okay now. It's the third green one is good. Is that the yeah. idea? Yeah. yeah. And if it's not, it's red. Or yeah. It's but in reality, probably 21, 22 bar would have worked. We've got 24. But 20 to 22 is typically if it's 0.8. But you get to know that. Uh, I would have known to turn it to 20 and then fine tune from there. So you can start. This at 20. This result's one, actually well in spec. Know, something like that. What did you say about spec? It's well in, well in spec. Well. automatically switch off the gas pressure. Why? Just makes it easier. Seventy eight, seven eighty four as we discussed earlier with, with this method you generally get a touch lower results. We'd have to do some more to be sure but that's certainly well in the ballpark. Would you, would you expect it to be? It depends. It really depends on the material and what they, how they've measured the IV.